Hey, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California. And to go along with my tutorials, um, I've been asked by many people to do an on-site um, behind the scenes video. So here it goes. Okay, on this shot, you can see we've got a large space. I'm gonna show you. I just wanna show you why I'm gonna put my lights where I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna use three speed lights on this shot. Okay. First one I'm going to deal with is we are seeing up the stairs to about that high, right there in our composition. What I want to show you, one reason to use a cam ranger or some kind of remote tether is because for me to place this light up here, I'm going to have to be um, upstairs and away from my camera. And what I'm going to do now is just show you how great it is. I'm going to get you in there. So basically, I'm looking at my live view up here, and I can see up there that I can see where I need to be up here. And when I do a test flash, I can trigger it from up here. I don't have to be downstairs, and I can see that it's just what I want up in this corner. I can see it's just what I want. Now, if it wasn't, I could move this flash. I can see if I've got it in the shot, which there it's in the shot, or I can see where I want to put it. But I know because I've tried it already that this is the correct placement. So I don't have to go up and down, push the camera and go look at it. I can look at it from up here. How about that? Okay. So anyway, we've got the single flash upstairs set on, I think, quarter power or half power. It's just to illuminate a little bit up there that we see. Now I've got the end flash, which I'm going to put behind camera up about, uh, eh, about two feet off below the ceiling, get a nice big bounce. And there I've got my Streak Light 360 in this corner. And I really like this because check this out. Again, I can now see, let's point it here. I can stand here and I can trigger this light and I don't have to go over to the camera. I can see if it's gonna do what I need it to do. Let me see. And I see that it's a little bit light at 1A. So I'm gonna try a quarter power. Much better. Okay, right on. So I've saved myself the trouble of going back and forth because I can see everything on my iPad. I'm telling you guys, if you're not tethering, now that some people say it takes longer, not for me, man. I'm going to go tethered because I can see what I'm doing. When I get home, I know what I've got. If I'm looking through the screen of my camera, besides running back and forth, I'm not going to know what to do. Anyway, so let's bring this uh, end flash over. I'm going to just lower it down a little bit because the ceiling's lower over there. And I'm going to put it over here. Whoa, okay. Word of advice, don't move an end flash with one arm. Anyway. Okay, so basically three, car three lights set up. I've got my big light illuminating that. I don't need an end flash there, but I just happen to have it there. So that's what I'll use. I've got a YN360 up, uh, I mean 560 upstairs. And then I've got the Streak Light 360 in the kitchen all going off. And you can see what's going on. Now we're in Lightroom and we're gonna edit this. Um, first, I'm going to show you, we're going to start with the ambient frame. Here's the ambient shot, plenty of light in here. And uh, we're going to, uh, I left on the uh, Young Nuo up there, which I probably normally wouldn't have, but I didn't think about it. So this is all ambient, all the um, lights in the kitchen, uh, the end flash above camera off. And I've got this and it's a nice ambient shot, nice and even. And the only thing I'm going to do is to, um, I'm going to take my local adjustment brush here and I'm just going to um, make it a little bit warmer up here and a little bit uh, brighter in here. Really soft, subtle. There we go. It's a minor adjustment, but it was just a little blue from the light. So I got that. Now let's take our, our lit shot and I'm going to do my special sauce or my uh, real estate bump. There we go. 
and that looks pretty nice. I'm actually going to make it a touch warmer here because my Sony tends to be a little blue. So that's nice and warm and that'll go well with the ambient shot. So I'm going to right click. I've got both those shots highlighted. Open as layers in Photoshop. And once that opens up, we'll edit it and get in and out real quick because this is an easy one. Okay, that's the lit shot. And because I shot the ambient first in the series, it's going to go on top exactly what I want. So it's up there and we're going to mask in the ambient. So we want to make a mask. I'm going to hold down Option in a Mac Alt for a PC. One day I won't have to tell you the guys that because you know that. Anyway, I've got my lit shot on top. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the majority of the ceiling fan. So I'm on paint. I'm on paintbrush soft. 4%. Let me just zoom in here and get rid of this ceiling fan shadow. I still had a little bit on the ambient shot, so I'm not worried about it too much. Just get it out as much as I can. There we go. Okay. Oh, there goes my computer again. There we go. Okay, get rid of the ceiling fan shadow up here, or as much as we can, because again, it was there on the ambient shot. I don't know why, but uh, it was. Okay, good. Now, let's get it again. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Someday somebody's going to tell me what, what's going on with that. Anyway, okay, we want to get rid of this, um, want to get rid of this highlight from that streak light in the kitchen. So I'm just going to bring in the ambient there. Actually, I'm going to bring it in throughout the ceiling in the kitchen. Look a little more natural. There we go. A little bit there. Good. Now I can get rid of it. Get rid of this, the uh, lamp shadow there kind of mellow out that there we go and I think I've made it look nice and still retain the sharpness of the light and brought in a little bit of ambience to give it a nicer look a little more natural so let's bring in a little ambient here okay here Bam, bam, bam. You can do as much or as little as you want. A lot of people say it's too much work for them. I personally think it's not too much work to do because I could do this photo in about two minutes, maybe three minutes max. Actually, I'm going to erase a little bit. There are two windows over here, so that would be okay to have a little bit of light there. Okay, and now I'm just going to go a little bit of ambient on here to cut down this light here. Bring in a little of the ambient in there. There we go. Okay. And the only other thing we have is I happen to have a little dirt on my sensor. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go Command E and I'm going to go pick my my spot healing brush and just go bam done okay so i'm pretty pleased with that actually you know another thing i can do i'm just going to do that um, the spot healing tool right here there we go get rid of that shadow there we go okay actually i can get rid of this up here too Not bad. Eh, it screwed it up a little bit there, but that's fine for the tutorial. Anyway, I think this is quite nice. I got nice windows. More than good enough. And uh, it did well. Really, really uh, pleased. And uh, so, Rich Bound Photography saying thank you again. And on to the next picture. Talk to you later. I hope you're getting some good, good tips from this. And I hope you're enjoying the behind the scenes video incorporated with this so i look forward to your feedback um right now it's pretty low quality video it's from my iphone i'm doing it myself but we're going to see where this goes 
and uh, take it as it comes. Talk to you later. Bye.